Hello, good evening, everyone, and one more come to Business Life. Coming up in the next half hour, Ghana to request debt relief through G20 Common Framework. We'll hear from an economist who is upbeat. Ghana is likely to receive about $15.4 billion from the program. The interview of one of the officials who worked on the staff level agreement with Bernard Apple, and he indicated that there's a deliberate attempt by them, mm -hmm. I mean the IMF, to help Ghana go through the program because of the geopolitical nature um, where Ghana finds itself. Economists predicts a further hike in the policy rate yet to be announced by the Bank of Ghana. As for a reduction, it's extremely unlikely. I mean, I would be very surprised if we saw a reduction at this mm. point. I think it's too, it's too early. Generally, you expect that uh, central bankers and monetary policy makers are a bit more conservative mm -hmm. and not uh, trigger happy. Coming up in this bulletin as well, Chamber of Petroleum Consumers Ghana COPEC demands an immediate reduction in the prices of LPG as prices of diesel and petrol go down by 8% in its latest pricing window. Whatever their excuses may be, uh, we don't think we can subscribe to those excuses at this point. We think that uh, for the numbers, they are supposed to go down. If you can't even do all 20, uh, you could do about 10, 15, and possibly uh, we can have a conversation there. We have details of these and many others lined up for you. Please stay. Grade 4, you could stay on Iam Pios, Kojobaka, straight to our very first story. Government has formally written to its international creditors through the Paris Club for debt cancellation. Reuters in a story said that a Paris Club official has disclosed that the group has received a letter from Ghana government but declined to give further details. George Yafe has the rest of the story. The request, according to Reuters, has been made via the G20 framework. This is despite the program being restricted for poor countries. The news portal also claims that Ghana is trying to seek assurance from the Paris club that negotiations can be expedited before proceeding with the request. Ghana is said to have reached out to the Paris club of creditor countries in December 2022. The writer's news agency also revealed that if assurances are favorable, then government will quickly sign on to the common debt framework. It is not clear for now how this would impact on government's own debt exchange program when it comes to the external creditors and the local creditors as well that are currently being discussed. The revelation is coming at a time that the IMF's managing director, Kristalina Gogiva, has also disclosed that the fund is engaging the Paris Club to fast-track the process of cancelling the debts of some countries that are said to be in distress and are in discussions with the IMF for a program. Meanwhile, economist Dr. Edu Wususakodia is upbeat. Ghana is likely to receive about $15.4 billion through the G20 Common Framework Program. He believes when the funds are released, it will go a long way to support the economy. Dr. Sakodia, however, wants government to negotiate well to secure the funds. Ghana has a chance. Um, Ghana seems to be the darling boy of uh, the IMF and the World Bank. I listened to an interview of one of the officials who worked on the staff level agreement with Bernard Apple, and he indicated that there's a deliberate attempt by them, mm -hmm. I mean the IMF, to help Ghana go through the program because of the geopolitical nature um, where Ghana finds itself. So. I believe that, yes, um, if we are able to negotiate well and talk to them and let them know how um, difficult things are with us and how we desperately need it for an IMF program, I think that Ghana has a chance. And I've already mentioned to you because mm. we seem to be one of the darling boys of the Britain Wood institutions. And so it's likely to happen. And if it's successful, um, we are talking about some $15 billion mm. uh, um, with, together with the multilateral. So we have $1.7 billion from China, $1.9 billion from the Paris Club, and then um, $8.3 billion from the multilaterals. If you put all together, you're talking about some $15.4 billion. Uh, uh, mm. So that is more than 55% of the total external debt. Mm. And so we are just hoping that this works well. And I think that it will be a huge relief 
to the economy and to all Ghanaians. Now, the Bank of Ghana has announced that it will hold its first policy committee meeting for 2023 from Tuesday to uh, January 24 to Friday, January 27, to review developments in the economy. The meeting, which will be the 110th, is expected to heavily discuss Ghana's high inflation rate, which stands at 50.3%, the highest in 27 years. The following report has more. Should there be some extra measures introduced to deal with the current pressure on the Ghana city? Well, that's one question that would come up strongly during this first Monetary Policy Committee meeting for this year. This is due to the recent challenge with the local currency which started in December last year. The committee will also not forget about the perennial first quarter pressure on the Ghana city as most businesses demand dollars to restock for the year. Again, what about inflation rate and whether it is indeed going to decline in the coming months or some extra monetary measures are needed to check liquidity. Most industry watchers would also be looking forward to the end of year numbers for 2022 when it comes to Ghana's total debt stock, the city's performance against the US dollar, inflation rate and whether the Bank of Ghana indeed ended 2022 missing out on most of its key monetary indicators. Also, an update of the IMF program negotiations, as well as the possible board approval for a program and the almighty debt exchange program and its impact on the entire banking industry. Well, reacting to this development, economist Dr. Patrick Isumen is predicting a further hike in the policy rate yet to be announced by the Bank of Ghana. According to him, the current macroeconomic conditions do not support a reduction of the lending rate. Hence, businesses need to adjust and strategize, at least for the first quarter of the year. He spoke earlier on the marketplace. As for a reduction, it's extremely unlikely. I mean, I would be very surprised if you saw a reduction at this mm. point. I think it's too, it's too early. Generally, you expect that uh, central bankers and monetary policy makers are a little bit more conservative. Mm -hmm. and not uh, trigger happy. So when they, when they do a policy, they might want to see the effect, its full effect felt through the economy before they, they take an action. Don't forget that when the policy changes, according to the governor himself, it takes up to four quarters for its full impact to be seen. So if they feel that they've gotten to a point where enough has been done based on the data they are seeing, and that when the cumulative effect of all the recent increment will do enough to fight the inflation, they might decide to stay it. Mm. As, for, uh, the, as for businesses, I think overall businesses will probably want to put on hold any major investment that requires uh, financing from the banks because it's not just the policy rate, but you know, the ongoing discussions about the debt exchange is really going to change the the strength and the lending power of the banks. So we are really they are really like to see more tightening financing conditions in 2023. So it, it is really important for them to plan carefully and then maybe minimize their plan, the expansions and the business investment for in the meantime. Moving on to some other stories, Dean of the University of Professional Studies Law School, Professor Kofi Abuchi, has maintained that commercial banks may not be immune from any legal action from domestic bondholders under a debt exchange program. It is coming on the back of concerns that the commercial banks that sold these bonds should be made to compensate local investors. Professor Abuchi has been speaking on the Super Morning Show earlier today. The safety theory, as I indicated, is not something that has been labored now because at this stage everyone knows that clearly it is. it may be safer, but it is not altogether as safe. Let's be clear. At least government is talking to you. At least we know we can find government. At least your principal is not really that much in danger. But often there are other investment, uh, investment systems where you can't even find the entity you invested with at all. And therefore... Your, I mean, I call them the pyramids, you know, the pyramid, the, of the pyramid of the 90s, you know, where you wake up one fine morning and the company doesn't exist anymore. It's not there. You, you just vanished. And so you lose everything. So I think it's a safer option. It is not necessarily as safe as we may have assumed. One point about this haircut, which I just need to mention, though, is actually the liability of banks. I haven't heard anybody mention that.
It is not just the government's liability, but the liability of banks. Because here's the thing. The instruments of investments that we buy, those are sold to us by banks. The intermediary agencies who operate by way of this sale are agents of banks who stand between us and government. Treasury bills and these bonds, they are sold to us by banks. And here's the thing. The banks don't necessarily come passively. They come actively. In other words, they come selling the instruments. And they give you convincing reason why you should buy X and not Y. They give you good reasons why if you invest in this, you are likely to get a better return. These banks are therefore active participants in our decisions as to whether to invest in a particular space or the other. What it means is that when there's a liability, the banks will face this. Recently in the US, some, some football stars and um, some stars, football stars, musicians, and a few other stars were sued for advertising for a certain brand. Now, the reason they were sued was because the consumers complained that they would not have bought those products otherwise, but for the fact that these football stars and um, um, high-profile personalities endorsed them. Endorsement has now become a matter of liability. So banks come before you, and they even go beyond endorsements. They actually tell you that you have to, it's good for you. You know, your money is lying dormant and it's wasting away, and you have to buy X, Y, Z. And they literally convince you and goad you into getting it. And they help you through the process in making sure that you're, you, put, you, you purchase a particular investment. So we can take the banks on? Well, I'm not at this stage telling you what you should do. I'm telling you what there is. That there's a liability issue of banks that nobody's been talking about. And that's what I think the banks should be worried about. And I think it should also shape the dynamic of banker customer relationship into the future because the danger of a bank being overly enthusiastic about the investment of its client should potentially raise liability issues and I think we may be standing on the cusp of a similar scenario. Hopefully this shouldn't happen for the banks but if it does happen to them I think they would really have to take some serious lessons moving into the future. I'm just mentioning this because I realize it's, it's, it's one, of this, you know, one of the considerations that I haven't literally heard anyone talk about. You're still watching Business Life here on the Joy News channel with me, Pius Kojobaka. We are taking a break. When we return, we've got more for you. Please stay. You're still watching Business Life with me, Pius Kojobaka. We continue with the rest of our stories. And the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, Ghana, COPEC, is demanding a significant reduction in the prices of petroleum and liquefied petroleum gas, LPG, immediately arguing the justification being given by the LPG Marketers Association is not enough. The Chamber's call is coming at a time prices of diesel and petrol prices have gone down by about 8% in the last pricing window, which occurred on January 1, 2023. But price of LPG has remained unchanged. Executive Secretary of COPEC, Dan Kanamwa, tells Joy Business his outfit will be engaging the marketers for a possible review of the price of the product. Unfortunately, we are unable to support the LPG marketers on this one. Uh, if you do the numbers, that we have for the window, uh, LPG should have seen probably the highest decline uh, in terms of price per kilogram, uh, which should have probably been around 20% uh, uh, per window. Uh, whilst we share in the uh, earlier concern raised that indeed, the taxes on LPG would need uh, to be reduced or scaled down. Mm. Uh, we don't think that is enough justification at this point uh, for them to uh, decide that they are not going to reduce prices of LPG uh, at the local pumps. And so we'll try to engage them uh, forthwith to ensure uh, that what is due the consumer now is not denied him simply because of the call for uh, taxes to be reduced on LPG. We think that that call is in, in, in the right direction, but immediately uh, the decline that we've seen on the international market together uh, with a relatively stable uh, local currency uh, necessarily uh, leaves us at a position where LPG prices per kilogram uh, at the local pumps would need to come down, and that we demand immediately. I wish we had gotten to engage them uh, before this uh, communication uh, public. Uh, whatever their challenges are, we'll probably need to hear them out. Uh, but we are still of the strongest conviction that 
uh, cool heads will prevail and uh, that users of LPG uh, will be given the needed respite uh, following from decline in international market benchmark and then again a relatively uh, stable local currency. And so uh, whatever their excuses may be, uh, we don't think we can subscribe to those excuses at this point. We think that uh, for the numbers, they are supposed to go down. If you can't even do all 20, uh, you could do about 10, 15, and possibly uh, we can have a conversation thereafter. But any such excuses, I can confirm, uh, will be countenanced, and we expect that prices will decline, uh, just like prices for petrol diesel uh, has gone down for uh, most of the oil marketing companies. We don't expect LPG MC to do uh, contrary, and that will be engaging them shortly. Let's now go to the Ashanti region where some business leaders in Kumasi have decried the increase in value added tax and the reversal of the benchmark value policy, saying the revised tax regime poses a threat to the operations. Executive Secretary of the Ashanti Business Owners Association, Charles Apia Kubi, says the timing of the implementation of the 2.5% VAT increment could cause public disaffection against traders. He wants the government to take a second look at the prevailing business environment to review the tax policies. Love FM's Nana Bwachi Dankwa Yadom has more. The Executive Secretary of the Ashanti Business Association, Charles Apiakubi, expects the government to have a better appreciation of current trends within the business community in making taxation decisions. He says there is a need for the government to have a broader conversation with traders in order to curb the burden of taxation on the cost of living. If government has not reviewed down taxation, how could businesses also reduce cost of selling? In fact, we have seen an upward increase in VAT, where government has increased VAT by 250 points. I will probably will call it that government have not taken its time to understand the challenges and the dynamics within the business environment. Until he shows that interest to know the plight of the ordinary business and the ordinary consumer in Ghana, Government policies will always be counterproductive to businesses and to our quest to look for economic recovery. While describing the taxation decision as unnecessary, Mr. Apia Kubi says it poses grave threat to business and employment. The point is that our businesses are collapsing and VAT is a killer of businesses. This year, government says it's not going to employ. And our businesses are collapsing that means we must also join that call that we will not also employ. We're even going to lay off our staff that we are working with now. And what happens? We're going to create economic insecurity in this country. Some traders, suppliers and distributors also say the immediate implementation of new taxation policies will lead to unbearable economic hardship. I'm not sure this VAT that they are introducing would help consumers. It will still make their it will still make prices go up, which in the long run, everyone will still complain that the government is not doing well. I tell you, this morning I asked some, some, some of my managers to go around to check prices. And I can bet you that people are selling under the, uh, the price of the, uh, of the suppliers. I mean, so actually it, it's, it's not good, it's not palatable for, for, for business. Things are really Traders are unable to reduce prices because the wholesale prices are all the time. Therefore, we end up fighting each other. Our engagement so far indicates that the 30% benchmark discount to Versal on importation, coupled with a 2.5 increment in value-added taxes, has a potential of collapsing businesses. This has been the responses of traders here in Kumasi. Nana Bwachi Dankwa Yadam reporting for Joy News.